Good day and good holy everyone. I am Gerald Lebron, your presenter for today. In our EDMA 306 Modern Geometry subject, I am going to discuss the objective number 7, the history of classical Greek geometry. To begin, Greece is a country located in Southeast Europe. The Greek classical period, 480 BC to 323 BC. This is the time that most of us think of when we think of ancient Greece. Athens, during this time, was governed by a democracy and great philosophers like Socrates and Plato arose. Also, the wars between Sparta and Athens were during this time. This period ended with the rise and then the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC. During this period, the states and their colonies reached great levels of prosperity that resulted in an unprecedented cultural boom expressed in architecture, drama, science, mathematics, and philosophy. The Classical Greek Geometry For the ancient Greek mathematicians, geometry was the crown jewel of their sciences, reaching a completeness and perfection of methodology that no other branch of their knowledge had attained. Although the ancient Greeks did not invent geometry, they studied it with great fervor. These were the ancient Egyptians, Babylonians, and Indians studied and invented certain early geometric principles, but the Greeks took what had been discovered and made crucial advancements that have shaped modern geometry today. Here are the greatest contributions to geometry of the Greeks. Greek geometers expanded the range of geometry to many new kinds of figures, curves, surfaces, and solids. The other one, they changed its methodology from trial and error to logical deduction approach in mathematics. They recognized that geometry studies eternal forms or abstractions of which physical objects are only approximations. They developed the idea of the axiomatic method. The great figures in this period were Thales, Pythagoras, Plato, and Aristotle. Let's begin with Thales. Thales 635 to 543 BC was born in Miletus, now in southwestern Turkey, in Asia Minor. He is an astronomer and philosopher. He was held in high regard by the ancient Greeks and named as one of the seven wise men of Greece. Various stories about him have come down to us from historians. One story relates that he traveled to Egypt where he became acquainted with Egyptian geometry. While the Egyptian approach to geometry was essentially practical, Thales' work was the start of an abstract investigation of geometry. He was the first whom deduction in mathematics is attributed. That is why he is considered to be the founder of Greek geometry. There are five geometric propositions for which he wrote deductive proofs. Though his proofs have not survived, these propositions are the following. First, that a circle is bisected by any diameter. Second, 
that angles and triangle opposite two sides of equal length are equal or the base angles of isosceles triangles are equal in magnitude. Third, that opposite angles formed by intersecting straight lines are equal, just like with that of the transversal line. Fourth, that the angle inscribed inside a semicircle is a right angle. And fifth, if one triangle has two angles and one side equal to another triangle, the two triangles are equal in all respects. Thales brought to Greece an ability to think rationally and critically. These are the two traits that became the foundation of Greek thought for centuries after his death. The second great figures in this period was Pythagoras, 582 to 496 BC. He was born in Samos Ionia and later Italy, then colonized by Greeks, may have been a student of Thales and traveled to Babylon and Egypt. He was a Greek philosopher who made important developments in mathematics, astronomy, and the theory of music. He was first to establish geometry as true science. Historians generally agree that Pythagoras was the first mathematician. He is an extremely important figure in the development of mathematics. Yet, relatively, little is known about his mathematical achievements. He also started the idea of a numerical system, and therefore, the beginning of mathematics. To the Pythagoreans, genuine numbers were the most vital thing, and numbers make up the world. He is best known for the theorem of the right angle triangle now known as Pythagoras Theorem or Pythagorean Theorem. This theorem was already known to the Babylonians 1,000 years earlier but he may have been the first to give a deductive proof of it. The theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared but this is not how Pythagoras viewed it. To Pythagoras, it was a geometric statement about areas. It was with the rise of modern algebra, circa 1600 CE, that the theorem assumed its familiar algebraic form. He gathered up a group of students around him to study mathematics, music, and philosophy, and together they discovered most of what high school students learn today in their geometry courses. In addition, they made the profound discovery of incommensurable lengths and irrational numbers. He was the founder of the Pythagorean Brotherhood, although religious in nature, formulated principles that influenced the thought of Plato and Aristotle and contributed to the development of mathematics and Western rational philosophy. One reason for the rarity of Pythagoras' original sources was that Pythagorean knowledge was passed on from one generation to the next by word of mouth, as writing material was scarce. Moreover, out of respect for their leader, Many of the discoveries made by the Pythagoreans were, dis were attributed to Pythagor Pythagoras himself. This would account for the term Pythagorean. Moreover, out of respect for their leader, many of the discoveries made by the Pythagoreans were attributed to Pythagoras himself. This would account for the term Pythagoras theorem. Consequently, of Pythagoras' actual work, nothing is known. On the other hand, his school practiced collectivism, making it hard to distinguish between the work of Pythagoras 
and that of his followers. This would account for the term Pythagorean theorem. Regardless of the uncertainty of Pythagoras' actual contributions, however, his school made outstanding contributions to mathematics. The most important discovery of Pythagoras' school was the fact that diagonal of a square is not a rational multiple of its side. This result proved the existence of irrational numbers. This finding greatly disturbed the Pythagoreans as it was inconsistent with their divine beliefs in numbers. Whole numbers and their ratios, which account for geometrical properties, were challenged by their own result. The Pythagoreans were so troubled over the finding of irrational numbers that they swore each other to secrecy about its existence. It is known that one Pythagorean did tell someone outside the school and he was never to be found thereafter. That is, he was murdered, as Pythagoras himself was murdered by oppressors of the semicircle of Pythagoras. The other great figure in this period was Plato. 427 to 347 BC was a philosopher highly esteemed by the Greeks. He was also one of the ancient Greece most important patrons of mathematics. Inspired by Pythagoras, he founded his academy in Athens in 387 BCE where he stressed mathematics as a way of understanding more about reality. In particular, he was convinced that geometry was the key to unlocking the secrets of the universe. The sign above the academy entrance read, Let no one ignorant of geometry enter here. Plato became known as the maker of mathematicians and his academy boasted some of the most prominent mathematicians of the ancient world including Eudoxus, Theaetetus, and Archytas. Mathematicians thus accepted his belief that geometry should use no tools but compass and straight edge, never measuring instruments such as a marked ruler or a protractor, because these were a workman's tools, not worthy of a scholar. This dictum led to a deep study of possible compass and straight edge constructions. Compass and straight edge is the idealized ruler known as a straight edge is assumed to be infinite in length, have only one edge and no markings on it. Plato's belief also led to the three classical construction problems. 1. How to use this tool to trisect an angle. 2. To construct a cube twice the volume of a given cube. And 3. And to construct a square equal in area to a given circle. The proofs of the impossibility of these constructions finally achieved in the 19th century led to important principles regarding the deep structure of the real number system. Here are the three classic construction problems. Squaring the circle, doubling the cube, and trisecting the angle. Plato demanded of his students accurate definitions, clearly stated assumptions, and logical deductive proof, and he insisted that geometric proofs be demonstrated with no aids other than a straight edge and a compass. Among the many mathematical problems Plato posed for his students' investigation were the so-called three classical problems. Squaring the circle, 
doubling the cube and trisecting the angle. And to some extent, these problems have become identified with Plato, although he was not the first to pose them. He is also known for platonic solids. First, the tetrahedron. Constructed of four regular triangles and which for Plato represented fire. Next is the octahedron. It is composed of eight triangles representing air. Another is the icosahedron. Composed of 20 triangles and representing water. The cube composed of six squares and representing earth and the last one is the dodecahedron made up of 12 pentagons which Plato obscurely described as the god used for arranging the constellations on the whole heaven and these are the platonic solids it has been said the tetrahedron, cube, and the decahedron were probably familiar to Pythagoras, and the octahedron and icosahedron were probably discovered by Theaetetus, a contemporary of Plato. Furthermore, it fell to Euclid half a century later to prove that these were the only possible convex regular polyhedra. But they nevertheless became popular, known as the platonic solids, and did not inspire mathematicians and geometers for many centuries to come. For example, around 1600, the German astronomer Johann Stapler devised an ingenious system of nested platonic solids and spheres to approximate quite well the distances of the known planets from the Sun. Although he was enough of a scientist to abandon his elegant model when it proved to be not accurate enough. The last great figure in this period is Aristotle, 384 to 322 BC. Plato's greatest pupil wrote a treatise on methods of reasoning used in deductive proofs, which was not substantially improved upon until the 19th century. He was the greatest pupil of Plato, teacher of Alexander the Great. He wrote a treatise on methods of reasoning used in deductive proofs. He held to be the basis of all knowledge, for in fact, universities and grammar schools were founded with the study of Aristotle as their main intellectual activity. He was the founder of formal logic, devising for it a finished system that for certain centuries regarded as the sum of the discipline. And he is also the first teacher. In conclusion, though ancient Greeks did not invent geometry, yet they took what had been discovered and made crucial advancement to it. By their greatest contributions, it had shaped the modern geometry today. It is really true that geometry was the crown jewel of their sciences.